Welcome to our tutorial on the Edit window. When you work on music, you spend most of your time in this window. In this tutorial, we're going to give you a detailed tour of this window. Some of the more complex features that we introduce to you here may be covered in more detail later in this course. The top of the window shows our controls and numerical position locators. Below are the rulers. We manipulate them with the ruler view selector. You can also disable a ruler with an alt click. To save space, you can choose none. At least one time-based ruler will remain open, however, by default. The same command is available under the View menu. Simply select View and choose the Ruler submenu. To the left of the Ruler View selector is the Edit Window View selector. In fact, I can select to display many of the features that normally I see in the Mix window. Comments. Inserts. Sends, Inputs and Outputs, and Real-Time Properties. Let's select None to save some space. If you don't have two monitors but find yourself going back and forth a lot, you can open some of those features here in the Edit window for convenience. Both the Tracks and Groups lists give you local menus that allow manipulation. You can show all tracks or only selected tracks. You can show only certain types of tracks, like audio or MIDI, etc. You can hide all tracks or hide selected tracks. And you can even sort your tracks view. This is pretty useful if you've got a lot of tracks or a limitation on your monitor size. Good organization of your track display will simplify and speed up your editing process a lot. The Groups Local menu also lets us show and hide groups. We can display edit groups, mix groups, or all groups. We can suspend groups if we don't want to see any grouped tracks. Let's open up the Regions list now. The Regions list also has a local menu. You can see that the types of tracks are distinguished by their icons. We're able to drag and drop regions onto our edit workspace. OK, let's go take a closer look at our tracks now. Let me expand the display for all of my tracks with an Alt click on the vertical ruler. Let's also display track color as well. We can color code our work for additional convenience in viewing and editing. If you double click the color strip, you'll pop open the color palette where you can go ahead and make another selection for the color of your track. You can also program how to apply colors to tracks. We'll be providing more detail on this in subsequent volumes of this course. Each track has a number of controls that we'd like to go through now. The track name can be edited with a double click. Click R to enable recording on this track. Click S to solo this track. And you can solo more than one track at a time, by the way. Click M to mute the track. Next to the track name is the Playlist drop-down menu. Simply click it to open up an alternate playlist. This black strip is your level meter. Up top is the clip indicator. If your level meter registers signal up into the red, you may end up with some digital distortion on your track. Let's have a listen to see what our levels sound like. OK, let's stop playback by hitting the space bar. And let's return to zero. To the left of our graphic track representation is the track height selector. Here's the track view selector. Right now it's in waveform display, but I can also choose to see it as a block. Regenerating the audio waveforms does take up some CPU power, so viewing in block form can be less intensive on your computer. My other track view display options. Other options provide an interface for writing automation. Let's select volume view. As you can see here, my audio waveform is dimmed out in the background, but I do have a graphic line that represents my volume meter. I can click on the line to insert breakpoints and adjust those breakpoints accordingly. I have similar views of other automation types, mute and pan, as well as any sends or other plugins that we can write automation for in real time. In Empowered and LE systems, we only have one voice selector mode. It's dynamic or off. 
The voice selector determines which of Pro Tools' floating pool of voices this track will use to play back its audio regions. Ordinarily, you leave it at dynamic, the default selection, and this is usually the most convenient choice in HD systems, too. Next, we have the time base selector display. We can choose samples and ticks. This doesn't affect the audio file at all, it just affects the display in your edit window. Ticks show you the time references in a relative format, i.e., in thousands of a musical beat. If you change your tempo, events will move to a new position in your window to maintain the same bar beat location relative to the new tempo. If you choose samples, your time references are absolute, meaning your region won't move in your display if you change the tempo. It may occupy more or less space on your screen. The last control we'll look at is the automation mode selector. We have a number of options here for how Pro Tools will read and write automation. Off, read, touch, latch, and write. By default, all new tracks are set to read automation mode. I can choose any of these options, of course. These last three modes are different ways to write the automation. We're going to cover this in a later video chapter. Pro Tools uses different icons to quickly help you distinguish the types of tracks you work with. My piano regions are audio regions, but my groove regions have the MIDI symbol next to them, and also the notes view is available for this MIDI track. That's another way I can tell it's a MIDI track. Now, many tracks have different displays for their automation. In this mode, I'm able to adjust the velocity or volume of each stock. I also have access to additional controls that may require automation and that are unique to a MIDI track. Groove Monitor, as you may remember, is my aux in track. I don't have the same automation views that I do have for an audio track or a MIDI track. I can only see the mute and the pan. Same thing goes for my other aux in track. As you can see, neither of these aux in tracks contain any audio waveforms or audio regions. And we don't see any regions represented from our region list in these tracks. This concludes our overview of the edit window.